in the recognition of the complete openness and openness and relaxed nature of our mind, this, this natural state of complete openness, what I discovered was that there is an ability to be in all situations in a relaxed, powerful way. And that that relaxed potency of mind is accessed through allowing all the thoughts and emotions and sensations just to be as they are just to allow them to flow on by. And this is what they're doing anyway. So there's no way to fix our experience in place. We can't hold on to um, negative thoughts. We can't hold on to feelings of frustration. Um, and so to discover that there is a very simple technique and the practice and technique in the Balanced View training is for short moments whenever you naturally remember throughout your day, just to allow everything to be as it is and to recognize this complete openness of mind, this um, complete perceptual openness that is always the basis of whatever we're thinking, feeling and sensing. And this is the training up process. We're training our capacity to know what to do and what to say in each circumstance that will be of most benefit to all. And this is the reason why this training is given. <clears throat> and this is the reason why this training has been given all the way throughout history. It is to activate this potency within each of us to use our mind, our body, our speech, our qualities and activities for the benefit of all. And um, I know when I first came to the training, hearing something like that sounded very grand and probably not very much like I thought my experience was. But I was open enough to be, if you like, um, scientific in my approach to the training. So I would hear certain suggestions or even instructions um, and I was open enough to test them out. And the first instruction was just to take these short moments, and, and you can do it right now, just allow everything to be as it is. Allow your feelings to be as they are. Allow your thoughts just to go wild. Allow your physical sensations just to do whatever they're doing and relax your mind and your body completely just for a short moment. And right there, there's a moment of just openness and ease. And then the habit of collapsing back into the focus on the descriptions is something that we've trained in um, most of us for many years, and I certainly had. So that habit of then focusing in on a, a description that just pops into my mind stream. It might be, um, I didn't sleep well last night either. And, um, and that just pops into my mind stream and right there is the opportunity that I have. The same opportunity, the same choice I have in each moment. I can collapse into that description which um, might go along the lines of um, I really need to sleep well each uh, sleep well each night. Um, otherwise, I would never be able to sit on a stage in front of people and speak to them in an open and relaxed way. I really need to sleep well each night, a minimum of eight hours. Otherwise, I can't function well. And that description, that collapsing into these stories, then is like a, a, a prison or a straitjacket. There's a sense of tension because I didn't sleep well, I didn't get eight hours and what am I going to do and everyone's looking at me now. And, or I can relax and allow that thought just to be as it is. It's this passing, fleeting experience that appears spontaneously and self-releases naturally without anything needing to be done about it. And I can relax completely. And so the training in allowing everything to be as it is, means that with increasing assurance, I can be with everything as it is. And that means that when I'm relaxed in a situation, I can just see clearly what will be of most benefit. So the most challenging thing that I found in my life before this training, and certainly before doing the 12 empowerments, um, was relating with other people. And I had lots of strategies to deal with relating with other people and all of the intense feelings and thoughts that that brought up and physical sensations too. Um, so things like 
social anxiety. Um, I was I was quite good at actually not showing it and then I had techniques like drinking and smoking which would kind of numb those feelings or at least um, change those feelings into something different and that's something that we might discover as we begin to get familiar with the way that we work and our mind works that we can change our thoughts and emotions but the only problem with that is that um, it's an ongoing process because I can't control the way that I think and the way that I feel. I feel happy one moment and then you know, I might feel sad or lonely or confused the next moment. And so that means that I'm continually trying to adapt and to manipulate and control my experience, whether that's with alcohol, with drugs, with um, just um, putting on this huge show of being this confident person and, and really just feeling all kinds of things but determined not to let anyone know or avoiding people completely. I was a master at that. I had all kinds of strategies. Um, avoiding situations that made me feel uncomfortable. And so participating in this 12 empowerments training I began to see all of these things that I was doing in my own everyday life to avoid certain feelings and um, emotions and, and thoughts and going through this process and seeing it really clearly and then being given this tool of short moments that I could apply when these uncomfortable thoughts and feelings came up it, it changed everything because I saw that I did always have a choice that I was never actually a victim to anything that I was thinking or feeling it was only the collapsing into the story about it that made me feel like I was a victim and behave and act and speak like I was a victim. So when I was um, with people that were collapsing into or um, just really emphasizing their negativity, it was never something that I felt really comfortable with, but um, I could see that I'd been trained to do things like um, perhaps sympathize with them and agree with them. Yeah, it's, it's, it is awful, it is terrible, it's, you know, how awful for you? And th those were the ways that I'd learned to deal with it, but actually was it awful? You know, once I learned to recognize the openness and ease that was more and more my own experience with my own negativity, then I could see that actually this habit of focusing on mostly the negative stuff was something that I had a choice about. And if I had a choice about it, then everyone had this choice. And I could be clear and powerful in those situations and support people in other ways to recognize their own power and potency rather than behaving as victims as well. And at the same time, I also had a choice about who and where I spend my time with. And um, I have a choice whether I want to surround myself with people totally caught up in their stories about what's going on or with people that are bright, shining, clear, loving, powerful human beings. And although I can be comfortable in all situations, and increasingly so, and powerful and clear and loving, I also know where I enjoy spending my time. And to spend time with other people who are also deeply committed to recognizing the nature of their mind and then living in this um, completely radical way is something that I just love because it's so easy. There's, there's no drama. There's just this easy, fun way to live and cooperate and work together. And um, for me, it's just totally mind-blowing that that is possible for us as human beings. I, I had no idea. I'd never encountered it before, so how would I know? The, the groups that I worked with and I'd never had open intelligence as the basis, as the shared tool, the shared focus that we'd all use to take responsibility for our own part in relating. And when I saw that I could be that example wherever I was and to discover this stability, then um, I just wanted more of that and I wanted what would support me in that. And that's what I found in the Balance View training. I had no um, particular interest in um, 
becoming involved with any kind of organisation. I didn't want to particularly be a student. I didn't want to sit in plastic chairs on the beach. Yeah. And But what became apparent for me was actually what I was really passionate about. And that was understanding in my own experience the nature of mind and seeing what is actually my capacity as a human being in a completely normal, everyday way. And so that interest and that passion basically outshone all of the other ideas I had about what was going on in an organisation and with other people and what I liked and what I didn't like. I saw that the information and the knowledge that was available here was actually the education that I'd always been looking for. And when I went to university, I studied philosophy because I thought that perhaps there I was going to be given um, knowledge that would allow me to understand what on earth is going on here. What am I meant to be doing here? How do I live my life? How do I relate? How do I deal with a situation when I'm surrounded with, with people that are being really negative? And I did not learn that at university. And it, it did. It left me a bit frustrated and... Um, and a little bit lost because if I go to a, a, you know, a reasonably well-respected university in England and I don't receive this information, where do I find it? How do I live my life as a human being? And um, as I've proceeded in this education here, not only have I been able to answer the deepest and most profound philosophical questions that had always interested me, but I've also learned how I can live in a completely open-hearted way with, with everybody. And although I love the philosophical questions and the answering of those, actually I want to know how I can um, live my life. You know, how do, I, how do I work with people in an open-hearted way when feelings of um, competition or jealousy or irritation come up? Now, how do I do that? And it's all about understanding the nature of my mind and seeing this simple choice I have in each short moment of either collapsing into the data, and data is just a term for anything that we can experience, or resting as open intelligence. That's simple in each moment. And this current moment, your current perception, whatever you're thinking, feeling or sensing right now is where you will find open intelligence. So nothing needs to change for you to recognise it. And that, I came to a meeting and somebody said to me, nothing needs to change in you or about you for you to recognise the true nature of your mind. I had never heard that before because there seemed to be so much about me that needed to change. So many things. It's like I had so many unkind thoughts about myself and other people, this running criticism, this commentary of what was going on. Um, I smoked. <laughs> How can you recognise the nature of mind when you smoke? And so there were so many things that were wrong with me that I needed to change and actually to discover that the current moment with whatever was going on, whether I was smoking or not, was ripe for the recognition of open intelligence. <coughs> And in that recognition, this openness, this ease, this clarity, this wisdom of knowing what to do, this intelligence that is a completely different order of intelligence than the one that is simply used to um, sort our data into positive, negative and neutral. It's that, that's a robotic way of living. And here there's this completely spontaneous, wide open, free-flowing, loving, powerful way of living that we all know is possible. We all know it's there. That's why all of you are sitting in these chairs. That's what kept me coming back. Because here was something that I knew in my own experience was true. But it had always seemed just a little bit out of reach or I'd had tastes of it and then it had gone away again. And this is a systematic approach for you to increase the obviousness of your own brilliance and then contribute what you have as a unique and brilliant individual for the benefit of all.